I appreciate having an opportunity to evaluate this summer's Aging Artfully class and to give you a personal view about the value of this program. I'm a retired literature professor living alone in a rural section of Greene County, Tennessee, and I heard about the bird sculpting class on our local NPR outlet, WETS. It's the living alone part that's most important. We hear now and then that loneliness is a chronic problem for the elderly, and though I never would have dreamed I'd be one of the lonely aging, I turn out to be a fairly typical example of the suddenly solitary old geezer. After a long and happy career teaching, where the solitary life of reading, grading, writing is happily balanced by the crowded world of classroom and colleagues, I suddenly found myself out of work, retired, out of family, my daughter moved to Texas and I lost my wife, out of community contacts. I moved here from Ohio to help out my 100-year-old father, and basically out of life. I always cherished solitude, but I never realized how fine the line between solitude and loneliness could be. And like depression in general, loneliness feeds on itself, pushing us further and further away from friends, family, community, new experiences, life in general. So I heard about the sculpting class and forced myself to sign up for it. I've never taken an art class in my life, and I was in just a state of mind to turn up my nose at something called artful aging. Nevertheless, I was pretty desperate, and this sounded doable, and I figured I could always just quit if I felt too out of my depths. Well, the short version is that I met a bunch of vibrant, caring, and creative people with a teacher who knew just how to give us permission to try new things and how to steer us, gently, towards some actual technical knowledge. I found the class to be demanding and sophisticated in just the right way. It was no basket-weaving time-killer course for people with nothing to do. It was a genuine art course that asked a lot and gave a lot to a group of people who could handle it. I had expected, perhaps planned, to miss various sessions, but I went to every class, took work home, and turned up on off days almost every time Angelique, the teacher, was available, even though I'm an hour's drive away. My classmates are interesting, creative people who gradually opened up a place for me to feel accepted, befriended, and challenged to live up to their standards. It has always struck me that dear friends do more than let you be yourself. They push you to be a better self, and they require you to engage in the world with them. This was exactly the kind of atmosphere in this class. It was supposed to be fun, but it was in fact fun because it mattered. And as a general truth, I think this is the only way we can attack this chronic loneliness in elders, provide a place where we can be taken seriously enough to have to work hard according to high standards. Don't you think? Teacher Angelique Lynch had never taught a group of geezers before, and I'm sure she found this a challenge for herself as well. She certainly rose to the occasion. I think all of this reflects the degree of care and planning that went into this program. It's clear to me that the people who proposed and taught all of this had a firm grasp of the kinds of needs facing aging people and of the ways in which various pursuits of art could help fill those needs. We don't need condescending, thumb-twiddling pastimes. We need community respect, rigor, and real interaction on sophisticated levels with imaginative, involved people who expect us to be the same. This program gave us all of that. I have a new set of interests, a new community of people, a new interest in being part of my community. Since our class ended, I have made three fairly major pieces based on what I have learned, and I expect to keep doing this stuff. It is, in fact, fun in the finest sense of the word. Yours? Richard Hood. Hello, my name is Shannon McDonough from Lifetime Arts, the nationally recognized leader in designing and disseminating creative aging programming for active older adults. You have just heard firsthand how meaningful the social engagement aspects of creative aging workshops are to the older adults who participate in them. Let's take a closer look at a few of the points that Richard made in his letter. He said, I would have never dreamed I'd be one of the lonely aging, but I turn out to be a fairly typical example. The thinking is that other people are old, not me, but he also realized that there is a fine line between solitude and loneliness, and when your family, work life, and social scenes change, you have to seek out the social connection. Richard said he's not the type to sign up for classes, but he did this anyway. He was skeptical, but... 
the feelings of looking for social connection were enough to motivate him to take this action. He talked about having a teacher who knew just how to give us permission to try new things and how to steer us gently towards some actual technical knowledge. The course for him was demanding and sophisticated in just the right way. In other words, this was no time filler. Richard attended every class. He drove an hour each way to get there and even turned up on the off days when the teaching artist was available for instruction and even to just help her out. He found that his classmates are interesting, creative people like him, who let him be himself, like your good friends do, and made that experience meaningful, that he wasn't surrounded, in his words, by a bunch of geezers. Richard also very rightly makes the point that attending classes like this is really one of the only ways we can attack this chronic loneliness in elders. We need to provide more places where people can be taken seriously enough to work hard according to high standards and to express themselves. Before we delve into the how, let's briefly address the what. What is creative aging programming? These are participatory arts workshops designed for older adults that are being offered across the United States at libraries, museums, arts organizations, community centers, NORCs, CCRCs, and other public spaces. They are often subsidized and frequently offered free of charge. Unlike drop-in programs, creative aging workshops are comprised of eight to 10 week sessions during which professional teaching artists lead groups of usually 10 to 15, but sometimes up to 100 older adults in the case of a choral group through a rigorous and fun curriculum designed to foster mastery of their art making skills, individual creative expression, and to engage them in a socially supportive environment. Each series culminates with a public event and celebration in the form of a performance, reading, exhibit, or recital. To date, more than 10,000 older adults have participated in hundreds of workshops across the United States, supported by Lifetime Arts, our funders and partners, and we have also trained thousands of librarians, teaching artists, museum educators, community and senior center staffs to deliver and often sustain these programs successfully. The integration of social engagement into each workshop series goes way beyond ensuring that participants get to meet each other and know each other's names. Ultimately, they become each other's champions, creative support system, and inspiration. While some of this community building may happen naturally over time, it's the role of the teaching artist to facilitate this comfort level and bonding by seamlessly integrating it into the curriculum design and weekly lesson plans. What might this look like? First, you must keep in mind that most creative aging workshops serve people across a wide age range. There may be people aged 55 to 100 in the same class. Some will be highly educated, others may not have completed middle school. There will be vast differences between them. Large socioeconomic ranges, religious differences, language and cultural differences, all races, genders, sexual orientations, political leanings, introverts, extroverts, and every kind of person you can imagine. The only thing anyone will know for sure about the people who are attending a workshop is that they want to learn a new skill. The facilitator must be sensitive to all of these differences and honor them. It is important that the teaching artist is extremely sensitive in their approach and in their language when trying to facilitate social engagement activities. Trying something new while invigorating can also make anyone feel vulnerable. Most people need a supportive and inclusive environment to feel equipped for the challenge. So while providing time for people to chat casually over coffee on breaks and before or after class is perfectly pleasant, it does not really address the incredible diversity within the group. It also doesn't recognize that sometimes unstructured social time is not the best way to ensure that all people in the class will have an opportunity to hear, be heard, express themselves, bond with others, and grow as artists and potentially develop into a new community. To be clear, social engagement should always be tied to the work at hand and be connected to the skills the students are learning. 
Here is a clip of Annie Montgomery, Lifetime Arts Director of Education, explaining the safe planning principles of great workshop design and highlighting the ways in which they foster positive social engagement. So something that I like to use to help me um, plan and think about uh, my best practices, and this actually applies whether you're teaching one class or whether you're teaching 10 classes. So I, I usually, I use this principle even if it's a, a lecture or a, a, a more of a conversation sort of class or a one-off workshop. It, these principles still apply. So a skill is going to be taught. That sequential where it's going to build, it may not build in a one class workshop, but you know that there's one skill that you're going to teach, so you teach it well. Within that skill, it has to be experiential, so it's not just an, an introduction. It's not like, oh, this is line drawing. Aren't I great at it? <laughs> you know, let's all practice it. Let's all grow together. Assessment. This is probably the key thing to any older adult class. What I mean by assessment is tailoring every step of your instruction, every step of your um, process with the students to each individual student in the room. That goes back to what you were saying. Someone said you're creating an environment between the students that is safe and where they're getting along. This is about student assessment. Because if you know that there's one person in the room, for example, who always has a lot to say, and it's always well-intentioned, but they might sort of dominate the class. I find this a lot. How do I then manage voice? How do I make sure that everybody else has an opportunity? Um, so I've assessed at some point that this student has a lot to say, which is great, but then how do I make everybody else feel like they also have a voice in the room? And that's just one assessment, but there's several. Um, feedback. When you are an artist, you have to have an opportunity to talk and share your work, talk about and share your work, and talk in conversation about how your work lands. You know, what, how does, you know, I, what is its, um, in the sharing, what is its impact on other people? That is part of growing as an artist in any art form. But we want to create an environment where that is not going to defeat the artist but it's going to empower the artist. So what are your, your feedback sort of protocols that you set up as a teacher or an organization that creates a safe space for that? And it may not look like a studio level class if some of you are artists. It may look very differently than that. Um, but how do you as a teaching artist in an organization have that in the room and the space to do that in a safe way? And finally, and we talked a little bit about this yesterday and, and did with some of the work and engagement, but how do you intentionally design engagement opportunities that, is, that are ideally tied to the artwork? Here are just a few examples of social engagement warm-ups that could be tied to various art forms. By no means is this list exhaustive. It is really open to the imagination of the teaching artist and the participants. But in a visual arts workshop, the teaching artist could ask participants to experiment playfully in the medium and then ask them to combine their work to create something new. In a dance course, partners could be asked to create new original warm-ups to then share with the class. Or in a poetry workshop, the teaching artist could facilitate the creation of a group poem. As Annie mentioned, at times, dominant voices within a group can make it hard for everyone to participate or feel heard. She recommends these techniques for the delivery of the social engagement and assessment elements to ensure that everyone has a chance to participate in both the manageable format of a one-on-one -on -one or small group conversation, as well as with the group at large. Here's how School One in Providence, Rhode Island described their experience fostering and witnessing meaningful social engagement during a recent intergenerational creative aging workshop that they offered. Quote, we're learning about the very special bond and intimacy created during this creative process. How friendships arise or a supportive atmosphere is created or the joy a group feels when one of them truly goes outside of their comfort zone to take a risk. We anticipated bonding, but the level of support and empathy between participants surprised us. Our younger students and older students 
traded telephone numbers and email addresses so they could rehearse together, read one another's work, and keep in touch. Here is one additional testimonial from someone else who hails from Johnson City, Tennessee, where our friend Richard has been taking his workshops. Quote, it is hard to put into words what this class has meant to me. I lost my husband in 2008 to lung cancer. I lost myself also. Now I feel hope. Hope to rediscover myself through music and continue learning to play the mandolin. I enjoyed this class so much. Thank you. You changed the rest of my life. The benefits of social engagement in a creative and artistic environment are clear. For more about creative aging, please visit our website, sign up for our newsletter, and review these resources. In addition, Lifetime Arts will soon be launching the free Creative Aging Resource Center website. This is going to be a curated resource complete with most recent research, media, and ideas on creative aging. Please do sign up for our newsletter for updates.